Welcome back everybody. Today I'm on my main because I've had my house ever since the Imperium addition about two years ago. I've recently been feeling like a small house is a bit cramped. I love how my house is designed, but my item limit is maxed out and I was forced to block off my basement. I really need more space. So I've started entering the dreaded lottery system and hope that Gemba gods shine mercy down on me with a bigger house. With an influx of new players, I figured it might be beneficial to show how the lottery system works. Plus, a lot of people are making a crucial mistake that is causing them to miss out on prime houses when they come on the market. Stay tuned for an amazing tool to help you find your dream home. But first, let's go over some basic housing knowledge. Houses come in three sizes. They are small, medium, and large. Or as I like to call them, a sardine can, not enough item slots, and how do I still not have enough item slots? You see, each house has an items restriction of 200 for small, 300 for medium, and only 400 for the large. This sounds like a lot until you start watching HGXIV housing tutorial videos and see them make a kitchen counter by glitching out 50 items. It's amazing what these people are able to do. I know Yoshi P says we'll receive more item slots sometime in Dontrail, but I already know it won't take long before this new max will feel like an impossibly small amount. To buy a house, you'll need 3 to 3.75 million for a small, 16 to 20 million for a medium, and 40 to 50 million for a large. The higher the price, the better the quality of landscape around your plot, with better prime distance to the market board and summoning bell. I started out caring about where my future house's landscape would be, what, how pretty it's gonna be, what's gonna be around me. But after a year of trying to get a larger house, I'll take one in the sewers of the goblin at this point. I just want a bigger house. The lottery system consists of two phases, the bidding period and the results period. The bidding period lasts five days during which a player can bid on one and only one house. This includes bidding on a house for your FC. You can only bid on one for yourself or one for your FC, not both. The phase begins and ends at 8 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Then the results period begins. You have four days to claim the house if you are the winner, or the house will be relisted in the next lottery. So my main is on Ultros, and I'm fortunate to be on a server where it's currently possible for anyone that wants a house is able to get at least a small. We usually have a few mediums up for bid, each lottery, and the occasional large. A lot of people will find available houses by going to the main cities and looking through each ward trying to find all available houses. I don't. This is a waste of time and an unnecessary amount of work. I utilize a website that tracks all this information for me, and I was amazed not many people actually use this site. What site is it? It's called PaisaDB. So here I am on Paisa database. It keeps track of every available house on every server. Every server. No matter which data center you're on, it's there. You just click on your data center and click on your server. It now shows all available houses on your server listed by district. You can switch this to show by size by clicking the arrow next to size. As you see, currently on my server, there are three larges and quite a few mediums during this lottery. If it says it's unavailable, that means it became available after the lottery phase started and won't be available until the next lottery. Since I no longer care where my house is located, I'll usually wait until there's one or two days left and just pick the house that has the best odds. As you can see, the goblet looks like my best bet with an individual with 17 bids and a free-for-all at 15 bids. Both were last updated four hours ago. So I'm going to head over to those and make sure they're still at about this many bids. Okay, let's check out the free-for-all house. It's in Ward 29 and it's Plot 38. Remember, Plot 55 says it's available for bidding, but it won't be available until the next lottery phase. So. To get to the residential area, I click on Alders Ether. I click Residential District Ethernet. If you don't see this, that means you need to unlock the residential district by doing their quest, where the heart is, and then that district name. Click Go to Specified Ward. This shows all the wards in the housing district. We're heading to Ward 29. Click Select. The available house is the gavel. Take the Ethernet shard to the closest shard. Outside the plot of the land is a placard. If you click on the placard, it will give you more details about the current lottery. As you can see, the plot currently has 17 bids. I'm going to go ahead and bid on this one. So I click enter the lottery. I'm given the option to buy for myself, private individual, or for my free company. Be sure not to screw up and click the wrong one. 
You can't fix this mistake later. Accept the terms of service. And now you see I have lottery number 18. You can easily keep track of your current lottery bid by clicking duty, go to timers, on top switch from individual to estate, and click housing lottery. It shows on bid 18 on plot 38 and ward 29, and it ends in two days. So I'll come back in two days and hope the lottery gods finally show mercy on me with a new house. Two days later. Okay, it's been two days and I'm ready to check if I have won the lottery. It's a good sign that nobody has added a house to the plot yet. This might actually be my day. Okay, here we go. We got this. The winner number is 15. I lost again. Oh well, maybe next time. Okay, let's imagine I did win and I'll go over what would happen next. Yay, you want a house. You now have 30 days to build a house. Surprise, hidden costs have begun. Your initial house will cost you 450,000 for a small, 1 million for a medium, or 3 million for a large. You can buy them by first entering your plot of land, clicking social, clicking housing, estate hall, and then purchase construction permit. It comes in three initial designs that are different per district. Once you purchase the permit, you now want to click build estate hall. You now have your initial house. You have now unlocked the true in-game gill sink. The first thing you'll need is a miniature etherite placed in your lawn. This way you and your friends can teleport directly to your house. You have two options. You can buy it from your grand company for 14,470 seals or you can also buy this off the market board. At the time of recording this, an etherite is going for 5,000 gil. Since on my server, the average price for seal to gil ratio is conveniently one to one, I would just buy it off the market board. But make sure to do your research and make the best choice for yourself. Other items you might want to buy off the market board is a Moogle letterbox currently going for roughly 55,000, a message book stand so people can leave messages after visiting are going for 20,000 for the indoor one and 12,000 for the outdoor one. And a summoning bell to access your retainers for 14,000. While decorating your house, a lot of furniture can be bought from the housing merchant. Players tend to sell these items on the market board for a higher price. So always pay attention to if the item has a vendor price before wasting gill on the market board. Popular items from the housing merchant include the garden eating patches. They come in three designs and you can have one, two, or three patches depending on your house size. These are used for gardening and are needed if you want to cross-pollinate new types of seeds like the Thabdarian onion. You can also get a chocobo stable where you can place your chocobo. It's also necessary if you plan to change your chocobo's color. The merchant also sells vendor tickets to add various vendors to your house like a mender, junkmonger, or your soon-to-be best friend, your very own housing merchant. Housing is one of the most enjoyable but also frustrating parts of the game. I mentioned it earlier, but a great place for housing inspiration is the YouTube channel HG14. They have a wide array of videos showing and usually even teaching how to create various housing layouts. I highly recommend them for more information on decorating your new house. So let's say you are on a heavily populated server where it's next to impossible to even get a small house. You have a couple alternatives that kind of hold you over. You can always buy an apartment or an FC room for 500,000 each. This gives the same 200 item limit of a small house, but you won't have a basement. You also won't be able to have a garden, but you can place two vases and grow two plants. But you won't be able to cross pollinate for rare seeds like the Thabnir and Onion. Each character can have a total of two residences with a maximum of one house. Some old farts were grandfathered in with multiple houses because they bought them before the limit was implemented. Not fair. So that's becoming rarer and rarer. Remember, you need to enter your house once every 40 days or you'll lose your house. This can happen even if you're logging on every day and not going to your house. I spend most of my time at my FC's house and almost lost my house, but don't worry. Squeenix will send an email warning you if you haven't entered your house and it's about to be demolished. Right over there and get in there and then go back to where you're doing. So, I hope you enjoyed this little look into buying a house. Consider subscribing to see more videos like this in the future. 
May the odds be ever in your future on buying a house. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. I really hope they add some more housing districts soon. Or even better, stop putting so many smalls in a district. Add more mediums to largest. I want a bigger house.